So you're thinking of moving to Block Island? Well, in today's video, my team and I are gonna highlight exactly what it's like to live in Block Island. We're gonna jump over to my desktop so you can actually get a visual of the map of Block Island and experience it firsthand. If this is your first time to the channel and you wanna know everything there is about living in Rhode Island or surrounding areas like Block Island, subscribe below, tap the bell for notifications so you can be the first to learn about the current market here in Rhode Island. My name is Devin and my team and I, we get calls and texts every single day from people just like you looking to make their move to Rhode Island and we absolutely love it. Whether you're looking to move in nine days or 90 days, give us a call, shoot us a text or send us an email so we can help you make a smooth transition here to Rhode Island. Let's jump over to my desktop so we can get started. As you can see, Block Island is its own island. Um, and uh, here in Block Island, it's a very, very unique place. Just to give you some proximity, you can get a ferry ride in the summertime from Newport. That's gonna be about a 45 minute to an hour ferry ride. Most people choose to take the ferry out of Point Judith. So right here, uh, when you come down Galilee Escape Road, you can take the Block Island ferry from right here. So this is gonna be your easiest way, typically to get out to Block Island. Um, they have a 30 minute ferry ride in the summer, or you can take the tradi traditional ferry, excuse me, that will take an hour. Your Block Island high speed ferry tickets as of this video are gonna be about 25.50 per ticket one way. Uh, the uh, traditional ferry tickets are gonna be much cheaper. I believe they're $15, 15 dollars, 15.50 uh, one way, just to give you an idea. Um, the also, the other method that a lot of people choose, especially if you're coming from Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, is taking uh, a 15 or 20 minute flight out of the Westerly Airport. So you'll head right out of Westerly's airport, takes about 15, 20 minutes, and you'll land in Block Island. Um, if you're coming from Newport or Middletown or Portsmouth, you want to give yourself if you're not going to take the Newport Ferry, you want to give yourself, I would say, if you're coming from Newport, 40 minutes, Middletown, probably 50 minutes, Portsmouth, closer to an hour, especially in the summer months, it does tend to get congested and they will leave without you. So uh, make sure that you give yourself plenty of time. As you can see here, so you are 13 miles uh, from the tip of Point Judith. So Block Island is 13 miles from the tip of Point Judith. Also another ferry that's popular for coming out to Block Island is the New London Ferry. This is gonna be closer to an hour and a half. So here's the New London area, that's gonna be closer to about an hour and a half to a two hour ferry ride. So it is possible to get out here. In my pros and cons video of Block Island, I did say that the weather can be bad. So if the weather's bad, you may not have a flight or a ferry ride out to Block Island. So just keep that in mind if you're purchasing real estate over here. So the first thing I'm gonna highlight in the video is kind of the different neighborhoods of a Block Island, of Block Island. So neighborhoods in Block Island don't really, aren't really defined. They're not as defined as the video I did of Newport or Middletown, Portsmouth, etc. So I like to kind of highlight, highlight it in these section areas. So you have the north side of the island, you have the south side of the island, the west side of the island, and also Old Harbor. So I'll break it down into four sections. So, um, so the north side of the island, it's gonna be down Cornac Road, uh, towards the North Lighthouse. Now, Corneck Road, a lot of the properties have views um, on either side of the water as you go down each one of these roads. The interesting thing about the north side of the island is it's gonna be one of your further drives into town. There is gonna be a lot of quietness over there, privacy, so if you are buying real estate over here, just be prepared that you will drive, it would probably take you 10 or 15 minutes just to get out to your property, only because a lot of tourists do travel this road. You'll find a lot of people walking it, biking it, hiking it, etc. So it does slow you down because a lot of these turns and corners uh, can be dangerous and you wanna make sure that you can visibly see if there's a car coming the other direction. Um, one thing that you wanna keep in mind, if you're buying Block Island as an investment property, these properties are obviously nice for having big family get-togethers and stuff, but if your tenants want accessibility into town, these properties may not be as desirable for them. Um, but, but relatively speaking, all of Block Island gets booked uh, up pretty fast, so you won't have an issue. Just It may be a deterrent for some renters, so just keep that in mind. 
Um, let's focus on the west side of the island. So the west side of the island, so you have West Side Road, is more on the back side uh, of Block Island. What I tend to find is less tourist will gravitate over here because they're more focused on staying closer to town, which is in the Old Harbor area um, right here on Ocean Ave. So you can see that um, as we dive in here, so this is gonna be kind of Water Street, Ocean Ave. This is gonna be your main area. So when you're living on the west side, a lot of, uh, again, a lot of tourists don't get out in this direction. It's very quiet over here, very peaceful. You have a lot of ocean views from over here. And the homes tend to be very spread out. You have beautiful lots that you buy. Uh, I think the scenic and the imagery out there, you have a lot of rolling hills, a lot of preserved land. So it's really beautiful here on the west side. As you gravitate um, towards the south side of the island, like where Mohegan Trail is, this is where I tend to find a lot of newer development, new construction taking place. One thing I do like about this side of the island is a lot of the houses have uh, non-obstructive views of the water. Um, so if you're looking for like waterfront properties that have no obstruction at all, um, Mohegan Trail south side of the island uh, will be key for you. As we kind of shift around, you have Old Harbor. So Old Harbor, I'll call it its own neighborhood. I would say like Mill Pond Lane, High Street, um, Old Town Road. I would say this area right here, I would consider Old Harbor. The thing that people like about Old Harbor is you can literally walk into town from anywhere. So if you have, if you're buying an investment property and you have renters that you know, want walkability, it's gonna be in this section, uh, this section of town. Uh, so just keep that in mind if you're buying real estate. If you want more privacy, you're gonna be the north, west, and south side of the island. If you're looking for something right downtown, you're gonna be in Old Harbor. Now we talked about the ferry locations, but let's talk about areas where you can park your boat. So obviously Block Island is an island, so it does attract a lot of boaters. So some of the popular areas that people will dock their boats is in Old Harbor. So again, Old Harbor will be very attractive to those that are looking to just walk in to downtown. It's a two or three minute walk into downtown. You have Ballard's Beach Club right here. And then there's a beach, um, there's a beach, it won't show it on the map, but there's, there's a beach right here that's great for kids. A lot of the jet skis will pull in here. So if you want something that's very family oriented, if you want a beach that you can sit at with your kids, watch them play in the water while being able to be docked on your boat, then Old Harbor is gonna be very attractive to you. If we go more towards the northern side of the island, let's see, we have Champlin's Hotel, uh, Marina and Resort. So this was just bought. Um, they've done a beautiful job renovating it. So this is gonna be some of your higher end boats. It is gonna be a little more expensive to dock over here. So just keep that in mind. You do have the famous Trader, Trader Vicks. Um, so this is gonna be more expensive over here. But again, the boats over here, they tend to, they do have the amenities. So they're gonna attract a little bit more, uh, I don't, I would say a wealthier crowd uh, just due to the price points. The next spot you can put your boat is on Payne's Dock, which is, which is right next to the boat basin. So you have Payne's Dock right here, so you can park all of your boats in New Harbor. A lot of boaters like this area and find it attractive because there's a very popular restaurant called The Oar there. So it's nice to be able to just get off your boat, come in, grab, grab dinner or lunch, and pop back out to your dock, or to where your boat is, is docked. Um, lastly, um, I wanted to point out, um, let's see where it is. So you have the Boat Basin, Payne's Dock, and then you have Dead Eye Dicks, so you have New Harbor, you know, you can call it New Harbor or Payne's Dock, but this is gonna be locations where you, where you would potentially park your boat. Let's cover some of the beach locations that are very popular. The popular beach in Block Island is gonna be your Frederick, Frederick J. Benson Beach. Um, this is probably most popular, one, because it's closest to Old Harbor and easiest to get to because of the Block Island Ferry. It comes in right here, so it's an easy walk to this beach. Um, it's, it's a huge beach. Um, some, of the, some of the things that people like about this beach is it, it is protected um, a lot by kind of the, 
I'll say cove that it's in. So the water and the waves tend not to be as significant here. So people really like to be able to bring their kids. They feel safe and it's got beautiful sand just like the other beaches. Some of the more, I say, exclusive beaches or beaches that people will go to is Scotch Beach and Mansion Beach. Um, Mansion Beach is going to be a lot harder to get to. So keep in mind that this road right here, Mansion Road right here, this is all dirt. So if you're somebody who is bringing out their own car and you don't want your car to get beat up, don't go down Mansion Road. <laughs> it, it's quite a significant dirt road, so just, just keep that in mind. Uh, this is gonna be a great surf spot, great spot for water sports. Uh, the waves are a lot bigger over here uh, for whatever reason uh, compared to that of Scotch Beach or the Block Island Town Beach. Now, let's highlight some of the restaurants uh, that I love going to. So you have the Ore, that's a new harbor. They're known for their sushi. They have plenty of space outside where the kids can play around. They have, um, they have games that you could play outside, uh, picnic tables that you can sit at. Let me click on this so you can get a feel for it. So here's the Ore, let's see if I can pull up some of those. Yeah, so there's their sushi. Very, very popular, well known for their sushi. I would say it's their most popular menu item. The entire restaurant, obviously called the ore because you uh, they have ores everywhere so over the years people have signed them autographed them and put up their own ores this is the view of the boat kind of new uh, excuse me yeah new harbor uh, where the boat basin is so again what i talked about docks but just clicking through these images so you can kind of see the type of atmosphere that the ore has also they have really good mudslides Let's see what else. There's a view from the top deck. So that just gives you a feel for the ore. Uh, also, you can walk to my to another favorite restaurant of mine called Dead Eye Dick's. So this is about, you go West Side Road, about a 10 or 15 minute walk, maybe 10. So Dead Eye Dick's, their favorite menu item for me is gonna be their lobster roll. So they do a hot and cold lobster roll. It's, I think it's one of the best in Rhode Island. I said that in my Block Island vlog. People may argue me or they may not, but I'm open to opinion. I'm happy to try other lobster rolls, but I think they're the best. As I mentioned also in my Block Island uh, vlog, they have a spot right back here that if you are waiting in line, it overlooks New Harbor. Uh, they have Adirondack chairs, fire pits, so you can grab a, you know, a cocktail and appetizers while you wait to get into the restaurant. They did also open Dick's Fish, which is a, sea, which is a fish market. So if you don't feel like going out, great place to grab you know, fresh seafood that they catch that day and be able to cook cook from home. Um, let's travel over to the kind of Old Harbor area, which is the Spring House. So there's two restaurants really at the Spring House. You have the Spring House Hotel, uh, which has its own restaurant, and then there's a barn, see right here, right behind the Spring House. I think the barn is probably one of Block Island's best kept secrets. I think their food is, is amazing. It's farm to table. One thing that I like about the barn is it is open all year round. Now, if you're not familiar with Block Island, this is extremely rare. So let me click on this. So this is extremely rare because most restaurants are primarily open only during the summer months. It has a really cozy feel. I wanted to see if anybody had any pictures of the inside because what happens is as you walk around this corner, um, the chef actually cook on an open flame on a wood fire grill right in front of you. And then of course, right in front of that is the iconic Spring House. Very well known for their wine list, uh, their different meats that they offer. One of my favorite menu items is their cauliflower, cauliflower, excuse me, bites on their appetizer list. I, their sauce is incredible. So those are really four restaurants that you have to seek out if you're going to Block Island. Also some of the hotels, so you get a feel for different hotels or at least some of the most popular hotels is the Spring House is one of them. The 1661, which is right here, this is another popular hotel. This is located on Spring Street, so again, in that Old Harbor area, it's very easy to walk into town. From here, maybe a five minute walk, it's all downhill, so it's easy to get into town, but vice versa to that, it's all uphill, so when you're on your way home, it's a little bit harder of a walk. Uh, the other hotel that I recommend is actually in the same area. They don't have it listed yet, because it got bought. I believe it's this building right here but it's the Manassees Hotel. So all of the really, really popular hotels are located in Old Harbor. There are no golf courses on the island. There's no par threes, there's no putt-putts. So if you are a golfer, I'm sorry to say that this is not going to be the island for you to visit, but if you're looking to relax, then this is the place for you. 
Some of the things I want to highlight for you, um, just wanted to point out the uh, Office Center Road is the Block Island Airport right here. I don't like flying <laughs> onto Block Island. I, I'm usually scared of flying, uh, but they just have prop planes. I want, I want jet engines when I'm flying. So the runway is not big enough uh, to take in any private jets or jet engines to be able to land there. Just a side note. Now, some of the things to do while you're out in Block Island, so here's Rodman's Hollow on the south side of the island. This has, if you're somebody who's into walking, hiking, running, Rodman's Hollow is a place you should absolutely visit. Um, it has plenty of walking trails. I think it's 243 acres uh, of available walking trails that you, can, that you can go down and burn off any energy. And then once you get down to the bottom of Rodman's Hollow, they have Black Rock Beach, which has really, really beautiful views of the bluffs. Just clicking on some of it. It's very private over here. You know, it does take a little bit to get down to, so you're not gonna find as many people are gonna go to Black Rock Beach. Also, after you head to Rodman's Hollow, you're gonna wanna visit Mohegan Bluffs. The Mohegan Bluffs, I would say, are probably one of the most iconic scenic views in Block Island. I'm gonna click on some of the pictures here. So again, you can get a view of the bluffs. Now, be mindful of, if you try to get down to this beach area, there's 141 steps. They are fairly steep, so I would not encourage you to go down the steps if you're somebody who's much older or have a medical condition or maybe a broken ankle because it is tough to get back up, especially when you get to the bottom of the steps. There's about 20 to 30 feet where you kind of have to navigate down rock. So if you're, if you're in any one of those conditions, I would stay at the top of the steps just for, you know, from my experience. You can, you can get caught down on the beach. The next thing I would put on your list of things to do is head over to um, the Southeast Lighthouse. So the Southeast Lighthouse is right here. Uh, it's probably a seven or eight minute walk uh, to, uh, to the Mohegan Bluffs, maybe a 10 minute walk. But what's nice is, I'm just grabbing some pictures of it for you. So you can come out here. You can actually take a tour to the top of the lighthouse here. So that's something you may want to do when you're visiting Block Island is to head out right out to the Southeast Lighthouse. There's also an area over here, an open field, um, right next to this American flag where it's a great spot for pictures um, and to be able to hang out with your family uh, and enjoy the, the scene of Block Island. Uh, there's also on the north side of the island, I recommend taking a car or a moped out here. You do not want to bike all the way. I mean, people do it because people don't realize, one side note for you is people don't realize how hilly Block Island is. So if you're gonna experience Block Island, I would recommend getting a moped. It's worth the money. You can, it's, the, the, it's only seven miles long by three miles wide. You can get around the island very easily. A lot of the mopeds you can get right in the center of town. You can rent them. But taking a bike out here is, if you want to work out, then take a bike. Um, but most people, again, don't realize how hilly it is. But if you come to the North Lighthouse here, um, hopefully we can grab some pictures of it. So the North Lighthouse is a very popular spot uh, for locals and tourists to seal watch, actually, uh, during the fall and winter months out here, especially as you walk further out the out of the outside the lighthouse. It's probably, I would say, from the parking lot right here to here, it's probably gonna be about a 20 minute walk. And then to get out here is probably about a 22 to 25 minute walk. It's, it's over a lot of rocks, so just be careful as you're walking. But a lot of seals will lay right out here at the point of the, the North Lighthouse. So it will be fun for, for you to experience. And then probably the most famous spot for people if they're looking to go out and party and have a good time is Ballard's Beach Club, which is right off of Old Harbor. So Baylor's Be ba Ballard's Beach Club, you come right off the ferry, you walk right down and you can get easily onto the beach, uh, beach club. They have all of this beach area. They'll have music, they'll have live entertainment. So it tends to be a very popular spot amongst people visiting Block Island. Thanks for joining me on our tour of the map of Block Island today. If you're looking to move to Block Island or any surrounding areas in Rhode Island, all of my information is in the description below.